and welcome to Destination Unknown. I'm Bill DeFoy, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Michelle Hubbard. And Thank you. welcome back in here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with oh, you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. We're going to just slap this table into shape. <laughs> now, we have been on a journey, and we're going to break out again our roadmap, our compass, our GPS, a flashlight, all in a... <laughs> Never mind. We're going to get our GPS out, and you have selected a topic for us today. Tell us about what we're going to be discussing. I think it's time to talk about gentle self-care. Uh, traveling in the unknown, you know, we were talking earlier, there's some wobbles, keeping your balance, schedules, reschedules, unpredicted scheduling. There's all sorts of things that come up, and it's really important to stay taking good care of ourselves. Because, gosh, we're, who's going to get us through this? Exactly. And one of the things that I have learned over the years, the most stable thing in life is change. Exactly. <laughs> so um, it's good to have some sort of centeredness in our body, in our mind, in our social connections, and an awareness of who and what we are, even the invisible parts of us, and keep ourselves centered and balanced and taking good care of all of those parts of us. So we have how many points that we're going to be covering today? I'm thinking today, let's take a look at how we can take good care of our physical self, how we can take good care of our emotional self. What do we do to take good care of our social self? And then how can we honor all of us? Just some little tips and thoughts on how we do it, how you might want to do it, sharing ideas on that. All right. So point number one. Physical body, you know, we can set out thinking I've got to lose 20 pounds and I've got to eat healthy and within a day we're back to our, you know, habits of previous that we wanted to change. What's a small easy step? Suppose a small easy step I'm doing for myself right now that makes me feel like I'm nourishing myself is I have breakfast every morning of cereal with a little bit of chocolate flavored protein powder so it still tastes really good milk, banana, apple, raisins, and um, this is actually an alternative to my hash browns and Dr. Pepper McDonald's breakfast. That's my favorite. Um, and this is a way, little small step, I still, you know, maybe eat too much meat, maybe eat too much whatever, but this one thing I feel like I'm doing is taking care of myself, and I'm staying true to it. And by doing that, you because you're eating early in the morning, you can define how early is early for you, but... <laughs> he knows I'm part vampire. <laughs> so that actually, if you eat first thing in the morning, that is going to sustain you more throughout the day than if you were to maybe avoid the food and then eat later in the day when all of a sudden now you're ravenish and you go, <laughs> oh my gosh, food. I'm on a seafood diet. <laughs> I'm going to, I see food and I'm going to eat it. And uh, maybe not so selective about what that food that you eat is. So that's one way of nourishing the body. It could be something also that I've found is a, is a really important go-to place for me is rest. And when am I going to bed? How long am I allowing myself to sleep? Can I take a nap? Because I notice I get more emotional. There's an off balance that happens when I don't get enough rest. And we live in a hectic paced world sometimes. So value the care of your body in terms of, is it telling you it needs some rest right now? Because getting sick is one of the ways it will let you know if you're not listening to the more subtle versions of it's saying, I want some rest, mom, dad. Well, I know person. for myself, and again, you're part vampire. I used to be up all night. I mean, I've worked all night. Oh, sure, in broadcasting. In broadcasting, I've done the, the graveyard shifts. And so I became vampire, but you know, now that I'm a couple of years older, <laughs> I realize the, the value of rest and I'm usually in bed by 10, no more later than, than 11. And if I go to midnight, that's really on the odd time. So you, and I'm hearing you listen to your body. You're listening to what sort of signs and signals it's giving you. So that's a really important part of self-care is to listen to your body. It'll let us know. Um, some other things, maybe, you know, you feel like just relaxing in a bath. Let those muscles come on loose. Let that warm water hold you, soothe you. And I keep reading more and more studies every day that chocolate is good for us. If you feel like a chocolate, and I guess this goes into the emotional part as well, it's going to make you feel happy. 
It also is good for our brain. It keeps our attention span longer. Have some chocolate. It's okay. Well, I'm going to take out some stock now on my favorite chocolatier. <laughs> <laughs> I've been munching chocolate kisses as if they were potato chips lately. Well, I got to admit. Go. But you're right. It is important to listen to the body. And I, mu I must tell you, naps are not overrated. Oh, I'm not sure they could be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been known to say, that's it, time out, I'm gone. When I have the opportunity to take a nap, I notice that my sleep is more solid than during the night. I get a better sleep. I feel more rested when I get up. That is the best for me is nap sleep. And that really revitalizes your body. I mean, your brain, your metabolism, everything. It's a great reboot. Yes. <laughs> All right. So point number two. Yeah. Take a look at how can you be gentle with your emotions? If you have emotions coming up, let them come up, be with them, face them, give them some attention, recognize what they are. Sometimes under emotions is another emotion. Let yourself have emotions. Let people see that you have emotions. Um, be gentle with the emotional side of you so that it doesn't get so stifled down there. All of a sudden it's something else that your body's trying to warn you about. And, you know, I was having a conversation quite literally with my second oldest son this morning. Oh. And he's going to have his oldest boy come live with him. His oldest boy has been living in Florida. My son lives in Indiana. And my son, who I know has a temper, was saying to his oldest son, look, I know you've got a temper, but it's not going to be tolerated here. Mm. and set out some guidelines. And what I was hearing my son say is, you know, I've had to learn how to cope with overexpressing myself when I, something upsets me. And I'm going to show you some techniques that will help you. So it's sounding like it's okay to express anger and here's some ways to do it. It isn't that you can't be angry here at all. We won't tolerate that. Exactly. And yeah. you have some guidelines of which you can express frustration uh, even if you're mad, but do it in a very healthy and a productive way. Well, and another part of the beauty of that is a lot of times underneath anger is fear. And one of the things we're afraid of is to express our anger because we're th we think we're going to kill someone or we think we're going to make a huge, big, explosive, you know, burst of volcano. And it doesn't have to be that way. Maybe we wouldn't even do that in the first place. But by completely eliminating that fear, making it okay to express anger and here's how to do it uh what a free you know how much space does that free up in terms of okay now this emotion is taken care of you know it's interesting that we're talking about this because right now on the roadways there's road rage and it is very prevalent throughout just not here in southern california but really throughout the entire nation right uh so it's important to face anger it's, it's not something that the more we suppress it and deflect it, it goes away. It just gets bigger. Would you consider then anger to be a part of fear? I consider fear to be the underlying part of uh, anger. I think a lot of times anger is actually a fear signature. Uh, you know, uh, fight, flee, faint. Um, Fear is like underneath so many things. So when you when you notice, what am I really angry about? It could be I'm scared I'm not going to make this appointment on time. It could be scared I don't have um, what it takes to navigate these roadways right. You know, the not good enough, not doing it right sort of a thing. Uh, that's why it's good to spend some time with our emotions and see what all, you know, may really be lurking there. Now with the road rage, I call it, I've got to get there first mentality. <laughs> Well, and you know, um, that is something that's inside of us from actually back when, uh, you know, w we have this sperm part of us that was trying valiantly to be the one that survived and got into our mom's egg and was the one that, you know, began the creation of who and what we are. So there's a part of it that gets in that very spermy got to survive sort of a, a, a reaction. So slow down on the freeways. The life you save might be mine. Or <laughs> All yeah, right. Take a breath. <laughs> take, take a, a breath. breath. It's yeah. okay. You're going to get there. See, one of the things that I've noticed, especially if you're doing surface streets, somebody will be whipping in and out, <laughs> in and out. 
and they get stopped at a stoplight and you roll up right behind them. They went through all that effort for nothing. To get right where they were going to be in the so first place. Okay. I've often been tempted to get out of my car, go up, knock on the window and have <laughs> them roll it down. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were somebody important and head back to my car. <laughs> Well, I don't think that would be received. I'm glad you haven't no, done it. <laughs> I have been held in check many a times. Good for you, checking that. <laughs> All right, so point number three. Well, uh, you know, we have social aspects to us. Some of us really like to be in community. If you've been having too much alone time of what you've been doing has been too work-oriented schedules, absolutely schedule on your calendar. Make a date with your community, your family, your tribe. What it is going to feed this desire to be in community? If some of you need alone time, schedule your alone time. Make a date with yourself. Have a place you can go to that's your place. Do something that will allow you to connect with yourself. Either you know whatever way it suits you best. But you know the social aspect. Um, be with people one on one. Be with yourself one on one. Get have that be in, in balance and a, and a part of recognizing as you're taking good care of yourself. You mentioned the word community and that's being with other people. How would you say, how important is it for somebody to actually be in community, to be with others, not necessarily other family members, but other people in general? I think it depends on the person somewhat um, and it depends on the group. I think we, when we can actually create a community of people who have some values that are similar to ours, beliefs that are similar to ours, uh, see us in a way that is how we also see ourselves, uh, that is precious. And to have uh, created that for yourself, that is something to appreciate yourself for and definitely to want to spend time savoring. Um, if you're telling yourself, God, I got to get out of here and I got to be around people, so I'm going to go to this event that I don't really want to go to in the first place, that's probably not going to take very good care of what your need is. Well, that's kind of defeating the whole purpose of going because you're really talking yourself out of going and having a good time. And if you say just the opposite, you know, I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to go out and I'm going to have a great time. You probably are. And if you go with the mentality, I'm not going to have a great time, you probably won't. And if you go with the mentality, I have to do this, you're probably not. Because that becomes resentful. Yeah, yeah. And there will come your resistance up and there will come maybe some anger up. And yeah, so listen to yourself. And if you're feeling like you need to be around some people, choose some people who are, are ones that will give you what you need and know what you need and know what you want and choose those people and activities to be with. How, well, maybe not how, but... What would you consider to be the difference between a community of like-minded people, of beliefs, values, and maybe the community of your family? They can be very different. And um, in my coach training, we had a saying that uh, uh, being in your uh, family of origin could be the uh, Olympics of uh, personal relationships. Um, so that's where it becomes important to have been taking care of yourself, your body, and, and be aware of your emotions. And then, uh, you know, like the next thing we're going to be talking about, know who and what you are and hold on to that. And, you know, there comes a point when, especially if you love them, they're your family, you have to let them have their opinions. You have to let them say stuff about you, but you don't have to agree with it. And you can monitor how often you go there. Well, that's very true. And again, I think a lot of it has to do with attitude, how you're going to embrace or not embrace how other family members perhaps interact with you and within themselves. Right, right. And uh, attitude has to do with how you see yourself, what's important to you, what lines you draw and choose to stand behind and what ones you're more flexible about. It, if you know in your heart, in your core, who and what you are, um, you're going to go anywhere and be okay and, and not get you know, uh, you know, distress, you know, thrown off balance, thrown in a place where um, what someone says impacts you in a way that causes eruptions in your stomach or this sort of a thing. Well, I have found those that have long marriages and that kind of thing that have been in a, you know, a relationship that has some longevity, those individuals are still really courting that other person. 
Right. Yeah. Give that sweet attention to what they want. And that be, that would be because it's what they want as well. And, you know, I've always thought of love as being where you put the needs of the other individual ahead of your own. Well, um, that sounds a lot like self-sacrifice to me. So um, I think it's important to know your own self. And um, once you know that, that's what you're going to give. That's what's going to be reflected back to you. That's who's going to be willing to give the space for the other person to be who and what they are. When well, you I think, confident. you know, yeah. if you're putting your best foot forward, or they're putting their best forward, foot forward, you're going to come to a point of um, having that equilibrium, that balance. And it sounds too like um, you're describing putting the relationship as a priority. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So All right, so the last point. Yeah, the last point is, is to know who you are, to know what you are. And to know what your yes is, to know what your no is, to know what within your heart you want. And when you're solid in that, then um, it's going to be an awful lot easier to choose food, to choose to express your emotions honestly, to choose, oh, do I want to be alone right now? Or, oh, do I want to go be with that group right now? Um, and then when you're, you're choosing from this place of I want, you're going to show up happy, you're going to show up open, you're going to show up available, and gosh, everyone's going to have a good time, including you. Because you're approaching it with the right frame of mind. I agree, yeah. Yeah, and uh, all you have to do is know what that frame of mind for you is. All right, so let's recap those four points again. Okay, yeah, when you're doing gentle self-care, take a look at all of yourself, your physical self, your emotional self, and your social self. Do you feel like being in it? Do you feel like being in community now, or would you rather be alone? And then uh, take a look at who are you? What do you want to do? How do you see yourself as? What do you value about you? Are, are who and what you're choosing to do valuing you in that way? Wonderful. So if people wanted more information, let's give out some contact information. Okay, you can reach me at my email address, Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Hubbard, H-U-B-B-A-R-D, the number four, the letter U, at gmail.com. And you can see our episodes of Destination Unknown at hmgbroadcasting.com. Wonderful. Well, we're going to put away our GPS, our compass, our roadmap, our flashlight, <laughs> and we're going to pack it all away until next time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining and us. And do join us for our next episode of Destination Unknown. Ooh. Build a foil along with Michelle Hubbard. This is a production of the Heritage Media Group. Mm -hmm.